Tuesday, October, October 13th. Um, <clears throat> if everyone uh, would please remember that this is a public meeting. It's being recorded, and we would kindly ask that you <clears throat> maintain a sense of decorum as though this was a meeting that was being held in person. Uh, finally, for those of you that are calling in on your phones, if you would please mute your line by pressing star six. And this morning, we will uh, begin with a Pledge of Allegiance uh, led by Commissioner Brown. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation for God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> uh, this morning, we have uh, some special guests with us this morning to honor Franklin County uh, Deputy Sheriff Angela King and her service to our community. Sadly, we lost a valued member of our county's law enforcement family on September 25th, Deputy Kane. Uh, and I would like to uh, first turn it over to uh, Commissioner Brown for some her words of respect for Deputy Kane's family. Thank you, Commissioner O'Grady. I just wanted to say how sorry I am. What a loss to our family in Franklin County and to the community who depended on Deputy Kane for all of her good work. And to her family, I say, we are so sorry for the loss that you're suffering and we will miss her. Um, I had the great honor to meet her and I know what a great person she was and will be remembered um, for her great, compassion and her wisdom and her help that she provided to so many in our corrections unit and in the community. So with that, um, I know that we have Commissioner Boyce who wanted to introduce some guests. Yeah, Commissioner Boyce is in our hearing room uh, with our guest commissioner, if you would uh, do the honors. Commissioner, you're muted. Commissioner, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Oh, he, he doesn't need to. We have technology. Can you guys see me okay? You hear me okay? Yeah. If you're real good. Um, first of all, let me say uh, thank you to President O'Grady for accommodating such a COVID-19 uh, ceremony type ceremony uh, but in honor of one of our fallen ones. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to quote the scripture. Uh, the Bible says that it's good and pleasant when brethren dwell in unity. And as I think about this moment where we stand together honoring the life of Deputy Angela Kane, uh, I'm very sure and very certain that all of Franklin County stands in unity, <coughs> honoring our loss and your loved one. Um, her presence in Franklin County her contribution in Central Ohio and her work as a deputy sheriff here in Central Ohio will be a part of the legacy that goes on and continues <coughs> to make Central Ohio a great place to live, work, and raise a family. And she was very much a part of that. I had the uh, pleasure of attending the funeral uh, last week, and uh, what was struck, what struck out to me <coughs> most uh, was in talking to the other deputies that worked with her. Uh, her friend, family, and loved ones uh, was her charismatic, outgoing, outdoor-loving um, personality. And people like that in public service are irreplaceable. Um, we know that she's irreplaceable in your life, but she's also irreplaceable as a public servant. And we honor her. We support you as a family. And we wanted to present the type of recognition that was appropriate Given a COVID-19 environment, um, we've got to do this sort of audible kind of setup. Um, but we really <coughs> wanted to let you know that when you're a part of Franklin County, when you're a part of public service, we'll always be together. We'll always be family. And, and just know that our hearts are heavy. And, uh, and certainly, 
Brendan King will not be forgotten. Um, as such, we would like to present today the family a resolution honoring her 10 years of service, but more importantly, hopefully illustrating the contribution and the impact that she's made here in Central Ohio. Um, we took the liberty of flying a Franklin County flag, half staff in her honor over the county building and county um, courthouse. And we hope that captures even just a semblance of our gratitude for her contribution to Central Ohio, protecting our lives, serving the public, and doing what she did best, and that's touching other people's lives. And so uh, before we present you with the flag and the resolution, I'd like to offer for deputy, or not deputy, you are the sheriff. Yeah. I'd like to offer the sheriff of Baldwin an opportunity. To take the well, I, uh, on behalf of the sheriff's office, I'd like to thank the board of commissioners for uh, the recognition and the appreciation for Deputy King. It's deeply appreciated. Uh, you know, she will be very much missed by our family, much more by her family. And uh, but as you said earlier, we are all one family. We're in together. Uh, we're just proud that we had her for ten years. But uh, again, thank you for the recognition. We deeply appreciate it. It's my Boyce, honor Boyce. on behalf of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners, myself, Kevin Boyce, Marilyn Brown, and President John O'Grady. It's our honor to present this to her son and daughter-in-law uh, for the service that she uh, displayed for Central Ohio. We hope this is a semblance of, we hope this expresses a semblance of our gratitude for her service. Give them a nice round of applause. Can I say a few, few words? Uh, yes, please. So with a great loss in my life and in everyone's life, uh, always reach out to your coworker, keep in touch. Everyone should have a shoulder to lean on. No matter how strong you think you are, always reach out because life, loss, everything is taken by everyone. She's a coworker, she was a mother, she was the best friend. She was more than, you know, she meant a lot to a lot of people. Even if you just met her for 10 minutes, she had a great impact on everybody. So if you need help or if you're suffering, don't suffer in silence. Reach out to a coworker, to a friend. Make sure you just talk to somebody because talking will help you. Thank you so much. Again, she's in our hearts and, uh, and never, uh, never out of our minds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Boyce. Um, thank you, Commissioner Boyce. <clears throat> Deputy Kane was special to a lot of people. We appreciate you being there today to be able to do that on our behalf. She meant a lot to everybody. All right. So we're going to move on now. Um, and we want to uh, recognize that uh, yesterday was Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, so we also uh, have the privilege of recognizing uh, Indigenous Peoples Day celebrated uh, yesterday, joining us virtually, we have uh, distinguished leaders from Ohio's Native American Indian community. Uh, as the original stewards of this land in this country, I believe we have a lot to learn. <coughs> Excuse me, we have a lot to learn from today's guests. Uh, we are here to uh, build a better understanding and educate the public about the American Indian and Alaskan Native culture uh, and their goals and missions. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to welcome Todd Smith, Project Director of the Native American Indian Center of Central Ohio, and his wife, Masami. We look forward to learning more about NACO's legacy and the vision of the future. Thank you for being here. Welcome, Todd and Nami. Thank you. Thank you to, uh, to each and every one of you. And uh, you know, it's uh, our pleasure to be here. I just want to... Uh, give a shout out to Robin as well. She was warm, friendly, and inviting, and she made it really easy for us to uh, want to, you know, come on board and speak with you all. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's an honor to be here. I'd like to introduce, you know, both my wife and myself. You know, we're both tribal members of the Confederate Tribes of Warm Springs, Oregon. Um, my wife is the executive director, and I'm 
project director at uh, the Native American Indian Center of Central Ohio. And uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, so we say NACO for short. But um, I'm going to pass the pass the floor to my wife here as the executive director and let her kind of uh, share a little bit more about what we do and what we're about uh, at the at NACO. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Honestly, uh, yesterday was a good day for us. It was a big day for us, our grand opening for our native, um, our NACO cuisine at the Indian Center. Um, and also Indigenous Peoples Day. So it was, it, it was a slow victory for us, but also um, it was a good step forward. So we're really happy that all this is coming together at this time and in, in the in the millenniums too. So um, we're a bit <clears throat> moving forward. We're a bit like uh, tired from yesterday. So <laughs> it was it was really um, it was really good. We we had a first good day, and uh, I would just like to thank you guys all for inviting us to the table. This is the first time I think that we've ever been um, invited to the table here. So we're excited and uh, we're excited for our, our Native American community to be involved with Franklin What's County, with to, be, to be honest. Um, and so, yeah. Just thank you guys for allowing us to be a part of this and um, recognizing Indigenous Peoples Day. And, you know, it's a celebration for our Indian people all over this country. Go ahead. Can you tell us how we can, as a community, get more involved and help the Indigenous people of our community? Are there things that would be helpful for us to know as people are listening to this broadcast, what would be helpful for us to know that could be helpful to you as a community? Thank you for your question, Commissioner Brown. Um, there's, there's probably a variety of things to, that can be spoken to. <clears throat> I think one of the most important things is really beginning to identify or at least, you know, kind of uh, have some sort of uh, context from which to, to work from and getting to know really who your, your people are today as far as Native Americans. Um, it's unfortunate, but a lot of times we're kind of cast into this kind of pan Native American stereotype. And sometimes things are very overgeneralized. Sometimes things that have been portrayed via media, just, you know, they, they aren't helpful. Um, but we're here, you know, and, you know, I would encourage you as leadership, you know, to, and, and I would really like to invite you guys at some point in time. And hopefully when we get to a sense of normalcy too, where we can meet in person, but to come and see what we're doing at NACO and we're doing, uh, we, we feel like we're doing wonderful things. You know, we've, it's, it's been, um, it's been work, you know, it's not to say that everything comes easy. My wife and I have been there roughly about 10 years now. Uh, but we've lived out here in Ohio for, the, well, the second half of our lives, really. Uh, we moved out here back in 96, and uh, we came from the reservation, our home, our homelands in Oregon, and we've been here ever since. We've raised our children out here, and uh, we feel we've had, you know, uh, quite an experience, you know, along the way. And uh, honestly, we've come to really have a heartfelt, you know, uh, love and respect for what it means to be an urban Indian, urban Native American, whereas before we had grown up on the reservation. And, uh, you know, things have really uh, started to shift in the right direction for us as well. And we were, you know, we're really excited. Like my wife said, uh, yesterday was the opening day. Uh, we're going to have, it, it's a soft opening for us. We realize that the weather is not going to allow us to go too far. But we're having that soft opening, which was yesterday, and we're going to continue forward up until about the little bit before Thanksgiving is what we're anticipating for with our NACO cuisine. And that's uh, our food trailer that's uh, come away by, um, you know, efforts of our community leadership within uh, NACO. But uh, a lot of uh, really, 
I don't know, we have a lot of high hopes and dreams going forward and we're excited for where things can go. Um, in terms of what we've been doing, you know, and I, I guess I'd like to shed a little light on, you know, kind of some of the things that we've been, uh, we feel like our, our successes, you know, here locally, uh, we've uh, definitely had this time to build and, and move things forward. And by way of early starting out from a platform where we, um, we had a project that allowed us to just really put the planning together. And we had a really strong presence of an advisory council voice and all of that and uh, community participation. And uh, we developed a blueprint, you know, and we'd love to share that and to go into more detail. We know that uh, time is limited on this, uh, in this meeting, and we don't want to, you know, sit here and talk for, you know, count <laughs> we could talk for a while if we wanted to, to share the, the great things that we've been doing. But uh, by way of the people's voice, though, we've really come to shape and form what the mission is at, uh, at NACO. And uh, we feel like we're on an upswing right now and things are really starting to move forward in a good way. <clears throat> and uh, we've been able to prioritize a lot of things. And, and one of the things too, Commissioner Brown and everybody else as well on the, uh, the board, I'd like to say that, you know, I think oftentimes too, our people are cast in a light that uh, it's more, it's more disparities, uh, you know, deficit, despair kind of base, whereas we're looking to push forward and show that, you know, and, and teach, you know, amongst our own as well that, you know, there's, there's room to talk about success and how do we, how do we look at this and how do we, how do we navigate what we call living in two worlds simultaneously? Because there's a piece of us that, you know, it's, it's about identity. It's about knowing who we are. And, and we want to instill that sense of pride. And we're trying to uh, plant those seeds and make sure that we're we're putting our best foot forward because you know and and coming from old as well from how our people believe you know this is ancestral to who we are you know forward thinking was a big part of how our people lived their lives and so even as we um, manage and take care of things at NACO today that's a big part of what we're we're really focused on and so. We prioritize a lot of what we do around uh, the youth, the families, you know, there's a lot of honor and respect for the elders as well. So uh, I know that's kind of a long <laughs> answer to your question, but, uh, you know, I just really wanted to take time to, you know, shed a little light. And, you know, unfortunately, too, a big part of uh, what we see and what we encounter with our people, and it just makes it even more heartfelt for us is, you know, there's a sense of in invisibility. And uh, not only to just be acknowledged or recognized as Native people in the state, and mind you, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're less than 1% of the population in this state. And, uh, you know, I imagine you're all, you know, well-versed in the history of this state. Unfortunately, the original Natives, you know, who, uh, you know, I'd like to acknowledge and give mention to were forcibly removed at one point in time. And, but what you have here today is we, we're, uh, we're a new emergence of, of, NACO, you know, through NACO, our Native community is a new emergence. And, um, you know, we're, we're really just uh, grassroots, uh, you know, at, at heart. And the things that we do is, uh, you know, and you could see the two of us here, and it's really like a mom and pop kind of show. And we're, we're doing the best we can, you know, and we're, we're limited with what we're allowed to do. But uh, we've been striving hard, we've been uh, fighting to, uh, find dollars that are available through uh, uh, federal funding. And we've been very fortunate to be able to put some grants together that have really helped shape uh, and put uh, a nice direction and set us in motion for hopefully uh, a, a better future. And uh, we have a lot of aspirations, visions, you know, we look at uh, things and we're doing the best that we can to honor the past, <laughs> live in the present, but, um, shooting for the moon and the stars, you know, because we really want to see a bright future for, for our people here. And uh, we feel a big part of it, too, is uh, being able to, to, one, share our story but uh, and keep it, like I said, in the current context, but being able to talk to you all as leadership, too, and being able to find a way maybe that where we can have conversations and um, that the Native people can be, um, I guess, you know, the voice can be heard and we can be represented in the way that's uh, meaningful you know, for each and every one of us, because what we, when we live away from our homelands, from, from our reservations, we come to understand immediately that, you know, there's a means to figuring out what does it mean to, to live and exist and navigate, you know, this, this urban setting. 
And uh, friends and allies along the way are, are ultimately uh, welcomed, appreciated. And so we'd like to extend a warm handshake again to you guys and say thank you. But as well, you know, open the door and say that, you know, we'd like to extend an invitation to to learn more about us. So I will, I'll say about that much. Uh, I don't know if there's a, maybe questions or any other thoughts that might come to mind. <clears throat> Thank you. And how would somebody get we, in touch? We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you educating us more. Yeah. You're welcome. And Commissioner Brown, you're, um, you can find us online. We have a pretty decent online presence. You can find us as NACO.com, N-A-I-C-C-O.com. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. You can type in Native American Indian Center of Central Ohio. You can see a lot of what we've been doing recently. Um, and then there's our emails on there as well. Um, you know, I imagine if you guys wanted to connect with Robin too, you guys could get a hold of our phone numbers and things like that. But, uh, but yeah, we're very accessible. Uh, feel free to reach out. We'd love to, you know, feel like we can continue some conversations further and uh, share more details about, you know, really what we've been doing here in uh, not only central Ohio, in Ohio as well, because, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of a blessing and a bit of a challenge at the same time, but we are the only viable urban Indian center in this state. Yeah. And so our efforts reach out to really all corners of the state and beyond at times. But um, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wondered if I could add something very quickly. Um, sure. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Um, our Indian Center really thrives on the cultural aspect of um, our peoples. So we're culturally driven for youth and families. And our focus is really on success here in Ohio. And we service all the way from Kentucky, Indiana, all over this state, our Indian Center provides services for all these Indian people over here that relocate from other parts of the country. But most of our people are coming here for better opportunities. And we believe that Columbus is thriving. You know, this, is, this has been a great opportunity for us coming from the reservation, but also for our children. And, you know, our Indian Center is a place to give hope and opportunity to people that are relocating here. It was really hard for us to learn how to live um, in Ohio, but mostly Columbus, because we came fresh off the reservation. And, you know, um, we had all that culture and all of our people around us, but the job opportunities and the education opportunities were not as readily available as they are in Ohio. So, and Ohio is a, is a place that doesn't have a lot of resources or, you know, they don't have a lot of visibility with American Indian people also because they are, um, there's not many here, you know, and there's not a lot of, um, there's no um, Indian lands here also. So I think that, you know, this is, this is the land of opportunity. We focus on success and not, um, negative things from the past or anything. And, you know, we're here to make people realize that you can be successful in Ohio. Um, and everything here has been really good for us. And it's been an opportunity for our children and, and our Indian people. We really believe that that could happen. Anyway, thank you. Sorry for that. Oh, thank you. We, no, appreciate thank you. you we do. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, we, <clears throat> we appreciate you being here. Um, thank you for, for your presentation. In the meantime, we will move on to the county engineer. And I am going to move inside where I have a better connection. Mr. Engineer, if I might, before you start, sir, I apologize. We actually uh, need approval of minutes, Commissioner O'Grady. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, my agenda, yep, you're right, we do. 
So can I get a um, approval of the minutes of the October 8th, 2020 briefing session and the October 5th and 7th, 2020 administrative session? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. The minutes have been approved. Thank you. And I'll go ahead and continue, Commissioner O'Grady, if you get in. Yeah, go ahead. I'll be right back. I'm just going to move inside. Thank you, sir. To the engineer's office, resolution number 695 20. Osborne Engineering Incorporated Consulting Engineers appointed to assist the Franklin County Engineer in performing preliminary engineering for the Treby Road 10.77 over Scioto River Project, Norwich Township and Franklin Township, Franklin County, Ohio, in the amount of $297,931. Good morning, Commissioners. I hope that you can hear me okay. Can you hear you fine right now? Trying to get a little fresh air, if you know what I mean. Commissioners, my name is Cornell Robertson, proud to serve as your Franklin County engineer. This capital improvement project is in the northwest part of the county on the line between Franklin Township to the south and Norwich Township to the north. It's Treby Road Bridge over Scioto River. This is a collaborative project, including Franklin County, City of Columbus, and a developer. This resolution is for a design contract with Osborne Engineering. We utilize the qualifications-based selection process and recommend your approval. I will move for approval 695-20. Second. Moved and seconded voting, Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 695-20 has been adopted. Resolution number 696-20. Approval of the farms at Jefferson Phase 4 subdivision, Platt, Jefferson Township, Franklin County, Ohio. This subdivision is in the northeast part of the county in Jefferson Township, along Clark State Road, east of Babbitt Road, known as the Farms at Jefferson Phase 4, consisting of 24 lots on 14 acres. This is the final plat, which is ready for you to review and sign. Once that is done, we will retrieve the plat, scan it, and then the Economic Development and Planning Department will pick it up for further processing, delivery to the county auditor, and then to the county recorder to be recorded. In these unfortunate times of spatial separation, I respectfully request a quick turnaround. Any, any questions, I request your approval. If there are no comments or questions, I'll move for approval of 696-20. Second. Moved and seconded voting, Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 696-20 has been adopted. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to the sheriff. Resolution number 697-20. Resolution authorizing a settlement to Wayne Hopkins for a disputed vehicle damage claim due to an auto accident involving a Franklin County Sheriff's deputy in the amount of $5,827.39. Good morning, Commissioner. Dave Masterson representing Sheriff Dallas Baldwin. Uh, this resolution approves a uh, settlement for property damage from an accident that occurred on August 17, 2020. <clears throat> it, uh, there's still a bodily injury claim outstanding, but this is the negotiated property damage settlement uh, that's recommended by the county's claims adjuster. Uh, pending any questions, I ask approval of this resolution. Dave, the prosecutor recommends. Yeah, the prosecutor's been and fleet management's been involved, been, been involved as well. Um, okay. Every, everybody everybody is in agreement that this is the best route to follow. Okay. If there are no further questions, I'll move for approval of 697-20. Second. Moved and seconded voting, Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner Grady? Yes. <coughs> Resolution number 697-20 has been adopted. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you uh, to the Economic Development and Planning Department. Resolution number 698-20. Resolution approving the recommendations of the 2020 Franklin Tax, excuse me, Franklin County Tax Incentive Review Councils. Uh, commissioners, good morning. It's Jim Shimmer, uh, Director of Economic Development and Planning. Uh, commissioners, as you know, annually we review our tax incentive uh, deals and uh, do that with the direction and leadership of audio uh, Auditor Stinziano. Uh, but what I'd like to do this morning is just take a second out uh, and give some folks a shout out. Um, as you know, uh, our Tax Incentive Review Council is made up of citizen volunteers. And uh, Kellen Craig, who is with uh, Ohio Finance Authority, Carly Boos, who is the director of uh, the Affordable Housing Alliance, and Michael Kininger, who is with Ohio State uh, Wide Development, have uh, been diligent in their work, uh, relatively unsung in many ways. Uh, they attend a number of different meetings throughout the county, uh, but they are, uh, for our viewers today, uh, your citizen representatives uh, to make sure that our incentive program runs well. Uh, transparency is a prerequisite for evaluating our effectiveness. And uh, in 2017, Good Jobs First ranked uh, Franklin County fifth in the country uh, for our ability to um, uh, convey and uh, be transparent for our citizens. So the portfolio is healthy, but I am going to turn it over to Josh Roth, who will take you through a uh, little discussion about this year's uh, Tax Incentive Review Council. Josh? Thank you, Director. Good morning, Commissioners. On August 10th, Auditor Stinziano, as the statutory chair, convened um, multiple county tax incentive review councils. And specifically, um, our Franklin County Tax Incentive Review Councils reviewed three active incentive agreements in three different incentive districts. And those are the Hamilton Township Community Reinvestment Area and the Canal Boss Community Reinvestment Area, both of those being in the Rickenbacker area. Um, and then the third being the Jefferson Township Enterprise Zone with an agreement with TS Tech, which is the largest manufacturer in unincorporated Franklin County. Um, in addition to that, we also reviewed um, a, a few active tax abatements in the pre-94 Community Reinvestment Area and the Rickenbacker area. Um, and those tax abatements don't have agreements with them, um, but we uh, monitor compliance with property taxes and, and those sorts of things. The Tax Incentive Review Council's task with review, reviewing compliance with the terms of these agreements as of December 31st of the previous year. So in this case, as of 2019, these incentives uh, resulted in 350 new jobs, the retention of another 256, um, 9.6 million in new payroll, and the retention of 14.6 million in payroll, as well as roughly $50 million of real property improvements. And the Tax Incentive Review Councils each recommended that these agreements be continued in their current form. And so pending any questions, we would ask that the board accept the recommendations of the Tax Incentive Review Council to continue these agreements. If there are no questions, I will move for approval of 698-20. Second. Moved and seconded voting, Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Resolution number 698-20 has been adopted. Resolution number 699-20. Resolution implementing sections 3735.65 through 3735.70 of the Ohio Revised Code, establishing and describing the boundaries of the Jefferson Township Community Reinvestment Area Number 1 in Franklin County, and designating a housing officer to administer this program. Uh, commissioners, uh, that you have challenged economic development and planning with creating more affordable housing throughout the county. Uh, this is a tool that we believe will be an important uh, effort and initiative to allow that to occur uh, when situations might very well dictate uh, tax abatement as being part of uh, a project, especially when we have the ability to lower uh, the area median income levels uh, to a more affordable rate than much 
excuse me, what might no, normally be required of a, of a project. So um, this is uh, a pro, uh, an effort that uh, staff, uh, Josh Roth and, and Alex Ross, or Alex Roth, excuse me, Alex Barris have put in place. Uh, and I think it's really an important piece for us because it, again, is allowing our program to evolve and change to meet needs that we find uh, in our communities. And the issue has been about the fact that uh, some parcels are not contiguous with each other uh, when we're looking at um, designating them as CRA areas uh, to offer tax incentives. So uh, Josh and Alex worked with uh, some folks locally here um, to be able to uh, put together this particular uh, program. And I wanted Josh to lead you through that uh, and we'll go forward with it uh, once it's in place. Commissioners, this resolution would seek to establish a community reinvestment area in the southern portion of Jefferson Township. And specifically, this proposed CRA, CRA lies south of the Columbus and Ohio River Railroad and consists of multiple pockets of unincorporated township, um, which uh, have been surrounded by the cities of Columbus and Reynoldsburg as, as they've grown and annexed into Jefferson Township. Um, these pockets generally fall along Taylor Station Road East Broad Street and Wagoner Road. And the purpose is to try to encourage maintenance and or new construction of multifamily residential for affordable housing, commercial and industrial facilities um, by allowing real property tax exemptions on the incremental increase in value uh, as a result from this project. Um, any particular project would need to enter into a negotiation phase with us. Uh, and then ultimately that would uh, be, uh, take the form of an, an agreement that we would bring before the Board of Commissioners. So this is just really setting the table to try to um, redevelop the area and, and offer opportunities for infill development. Pending any questions, we would ask for your approval. If there are no comments or questions, I'll move for approval of 699.20. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Grady. Yes. Resolution number 699-20 has been adopted. Resolution number 700-20. Resolution to adjust the boundaries of Montgomery Township, thereby making them conform to the boundaries of the City of Columbus, case number ANX-26-20. Good morning, Commissioners. Jenny Snap, Assistant Director, Economic Development and Planning. This resolution is to consider a boundary change petition to adjust the boundary lines of Montgomery Township to conform to the boundaries of the City of Columbus. The petition was filed by the City of Columbus pursuant to City Ordinance Number 1338-2020 on June 29, 2020, authorizing the submission of the petition to the Board of County Commissioners requesting that the boundary lines of Montgomery Township be changed to make them conform with the corporate limits of the City of Columbus for the Plain Township area included in the annexation. The area to be adjusted includes a parcel of land annexed to the City of Columbus from Plain Township and approved by you, the Board of County Commissioners, on February 25th, 2020 um, as an expedited Type 1 annexation known as ANX-05-20. The property consists of 3.84 acres from at the property 5364 Thompson Road. That's north of Thompson Road, east of North Hamilton Road, south of East Dublin Granville Road, and west of Johnstown Road. Under the terms of the annexation agreement between the City of Columbus and Plain Township that was entered into on February 26, 2008, the boundaries of the site must be conformed so that the ter territory annexed to the City of Columbus from Plain Township is transferred to Montgomery Township. Petition was filed in accordance with Section 503.07 of the Ohio Revised Code, and pending any questions, we request your approval of this petition. And I should note for the record, um, again, Montgomery Township is the paper township in this case. So it's the underlying township that existed before the city of Columbus um, continued to annex property. So it has no administrative function. It just is in existence on the paper map. If there are no comments or questions, I'll move approval of 700-20. Second. 
Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Resolution number 700-20 has been adopted. Thank you. Good morning and thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Justice policy and programs. Resolution number 701-20. Resolution authorizing a second contract amendment with the University of Cincinnati for Justice Practitioner Training Services in the amount of $59,250. Good morning, Commissioners. Melissa Pearson, Deputy Director with the Office of Justice Policy and Programs. Uh, commissioners, this resolution will request your approval of a second contract amendment, again, with the University of Cincinnati for Cognitive Behavioral Treatment Training, Facilitator Training for up to 18 Justice Practitioners from the CBCF, Sheriff's Office, Municipal Court, Probation, Mary Haven, Community for New Directions, Alvis, and my office. This amendment will increase the original contract amount by 20,500 to a revised amount of 59,250 and support our vision of adopting an evidence-based community-wide standard for cognitive behavioral treatment for justice-involved individuals. Pending any questions, we respectfully request your approval of this amendment. Move approval of 70120. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 701 20 has been adopted. Thanks, Melissa. All right, human, human resources. Resolution number 702 20. Resolution authorizing an agreement with The Ohio State University for the purchase of management advancement for the public service maps training units for agencies of the Board of Commissioners in the amount of $46,350. Good morning, Commissioner Sue Hamilton from the Department of Human Resources. Today for your consideration is our request for approval to purchase training credits for use by Board of Commissioner employees from The Ohio State University John Glenn College of Public Affairs. The available classes are a part of a management advancement program, which is specifically designed for employees serving the public. Pending any questions you may have, I respectfully request your approval of this request. Are all these classes now virtual? Is, is that, have they all gone virtual during the pandemic, Sue? Yes, they are at this time. Okay. All right, um, I'll move for approval of 702.20. Second. Moved and seconded voting, Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 702-20 has been adopted. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Uh, to uh, purchasing. Resolution number 703-20. Resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of, excuse me, $1,702,847.86. Good morning, commissioners. Megan Pierre-Valanier, Director of Purchasing. This resolution requests your approval of 75 purchase orders for which the county auditor has pre-certified available funding. This week, 10 out of 16 eligible POs totaling $58,917 are being presented for award to six women business enterprises, two minority business enterprises, and two small and emerging business enterprises. This represents 63% of the eligible PO volume and 13% of the eligible PO dollar value. Pending any questions, I request your approval of this resolution. I'll move for approval of 703.20. Second. Moved and seconded voting, Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Resolution number 703-20 has been adopted. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. The Board of Commissioners. Resolution number 704-20. Resolution authorizing choices for victims of domestic, excuse me, Start over. I'm having a little trouble this morning. Resolution authorizing choices for victims of Domestic Violence Incorporated to receive the fees collected in 2021 for the support of shelters for victims of domestic violence. Good morning, Commissioners. Zach Tolerick with the Office of Management and Budget. 
Uh, this resolution would authorize choices to receive the $17 fee for each marriage license issued and the $32 fee for each action of proceeding for annulment, divorce, or dissolution that is collected in 2021 to provide financial assistance for domestic violence shelters. Uh, these fees are collectively referred to as the Senate Bill 46 collections. Uh, it is currently estimated that this will generate approximately 315,000 in revenue next year for choices. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Sue Valillo, who's on the line, to say a few words. So, Sue, good morning. Um, October's domestic violence, or National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and Sue's here this morning to help us to raise awareness uh, of the growing plight of domestic violence in our community and across the country. So, um, before we hear from Sue, though, I want to congratulate her organization on um, Lutheran Social Services Choices, uh, Franklin County Justice Policy and Programs, which uh, was Melissa's organization, but I don't think Melissa's still on the line this morning, um, and City Attorney Zach Klein for the collaborative efforts and successfully securing a $900,000 grant from the U.S. Department of Justice. Um, this funding will be used to implement a blueprint for safety a model uh, that's coming in, in the coming years. So thanks for being here with us this morning, Sue, um, and bringing some awareness to a topic that sadly affects more victims every day, especially now during this uh, difficult time, this pandemic that we're dealing with. So the floor is yours. The, the video conference is yours. Thank you, President O'Grady. Good morning, commissioners. Um, yes. I Let's start with a minute just talk to talk about the blueprint and how that's really built off the successful collaborations already with the city and the county and the Franklin County uh, Justice Policy and Programs, um, Choices for Victims of Domestic Violence and the Center for Sa Family Safety and Healing, first with the Lethality Assessment Program, then with the Firearms Technical Assistance Program, and now with the Blueprint for Safety. I think all of these partners coming together, uniting we really have an opportunity in this community to de decrease the episodes of violence that are happening um, in intimate partner relationships through these collaborations. So this is wonderful news for the community, wonderful for all of us who get to be a part of it. And I thank you for joining in with that as well. Um, thank you also just for your the commission's ongoing support of choices, deeply appreciated. Commissioner Boyce, a, a special thank you to you for participating in our recent awareness program. Um, I will share with you that that day we had about a 40% increase in calls into our hotline. So not only were we raising awareness in the community, we were actually reaching victims who needed our services and your participation in that was deeply appreciated. Um, one more thank you, if you don't mind, and that's for the uh, recent Resiliency Initiative funding that has helped Choices cover some of our COVID-related costs. Um, as I'm sure you can imagine, with a shelter the size that Choices is, increased, increased cleaning protocols, providing um, personal protection for people to be safe, masks and hand sanitizers, uh, doing activities to keep people who are in shelter now all day long engaged and active. Um, we've really incurred some additional expense and we appreciate these funds to help us manage that expense. Um, this has been an extremely challenging year for everyone, but particularly for victims of domestic violence who may be more isolated in their home with their abuser than ever before, who are now having to weigh decisions like staying in a home where they know there's violence and they know they're not safe and potentially coming into a shelter that's not known to them, I think is frightening at any point, but then add a pandemic to that. Add living with people that you don't know and wondering if you're gonna be able to keep your family healthy. So this has been a really difficult year for victims. I'm happy to say that at the shelter, we have been able to keep everyone safe and healthy, which is wonderful news. In the last year, we served 916 people in shelter, um, had over 4,000 hotline calls. There will definitely be an increase in the number of hotline calls that we're seeing in this year. We are already experiencing a more than 11% increase in calls coming from law enforcement as part of the lethality assessment program. 
Our community-based services have remained active throughout the pandemic, offering services both in person and remotely. Um, we've served 335 people in community advocacy, 292 people in individual counseling. I'm sorry. No, that was correct. I'm sorry. 292 people in individual counseling and 257 people with our legal advocacy services. Um, it's been a difficult year, yet people are reaching out for help, and we want to be able to be there to meet the need. Um, as I shared with you at the briefing last week, Choices has begun an expansion of the shelter. We knew the day would come when we needed this expansion, and we prepared for it by shelling in an area of the building, which we are now completing. Um, this will add capacity for six bedrooms or approximately 24 beds to the current shelter. We are typically above capacity with a short wait list. That is not uncommon at the shelter, and we really want to be able to meet the demand for shelter for everyone who needs it, especially for those victims who are deemed high danger uh, through the lethality assessment program. I think, as you also know, um, the state of Ohio experienced some significant cuts in the VOCA funding. $20 million from the federal government was cut to the state of Ohio. This has resulted in cuts across the state to shelter programs or choices. This is a loss in funding from last year of $170,000. We are working hard to make these funds up, to increase our fundraising efforts, um, and, and to be thankful to our supporters, and that includes all of you who have been so helpful with everything Choices has accomplished in the last couple of years. Um, lastly, I'd like to say that if you are listening to this or if you are watching this and you are in need of services, please call Choices Hotline. It is answered 24 hours a day by a trained advocate who can assist you. The number is 614-224. Four six six three. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Um, right. if, if there are no other comments, I'll move for passage just seven zero four twenty. And thank you so much. Second. Moved and seconded. Voting, Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 704-20 has been adopted. All right. Uh, Dean, do we have any uh, journalizations today? We do not, Commissioner. Okay. Um, Mr. Hopkins, do we have anything? Uh, do you have any questions for the commissioners this morning? No questions this morning. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Do we have any other media on the line? I didn't believe so. All right, everybody, uh, good meeting and uh, have a great rest of your day and we will see everybody soon. Thank you, everyone.